We brewed a beer. We actually brewed the same beer twice. The West Coast IPA. First beer, the one we tasted in the video, awesome, amazing. The second beer, the one we brewed that day, no, not awesome, not amazing. It's this beer right here. I think I ended the fermentation too soon before it was actually done. It tastes like green apples and I do not like that. It's an apple beer. Yeah, there's no apple in it. So I'm gonna try and save this beer. If we have the acid aldehyde flavor because I rushed the fermentation, then this should work. I could potentially just, you know, sprinkle a little bit of dry yeast in there, but I've read multiple sources that have said, make a yeast starter, add actively fermenting wort to the beer, leave it sit for another, you know, four or five days or maybe even a week, and that should clean up the off flavor in the beer. It's been quite a while since I've made a yeast starter, so I'm literally just gonna get on our website, clawhammersupply.com, and look up our tutorial on making a yeast starter. So it's telling me I need uh, 1,200 milliliters of water and 100 grams of dry malt extract. In the past, you may have seen some unscrupulous uh, characters on the internet put uh, a flask like this directly on a hot plate, and I'm not gonna name any names, Claw Hammer Supply. You really shouldn't do that. That stresses the glass out and it causes these things to break. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put this in a hot water bath in a pot and we're gonna heat it that way. I want the DME to more or less be completely dissolved before I put it back on the heat. We'll leave it boil on here for about 10 minutes and then I'm gonna cool it down and then we'll pitch the yeast. So I boiled this for 10 minutes. I'm just gonna put it in this pot of cold water. Actually, I forgot to put this in here, so. So I'm gonna use our 120 volt controller to try to get a read on what kind of temperature we have in there. We've already boiled this dry malt extract and sanitized it. So at this point, we don't wanna be putting unsanitized stuff in there because we don't want this yeast starter to get contaminated. I'm really hoping this works because we've had several beers over the years that have had this acid aldehyde uh, flavor. Hey. We're gonna attempt to clean this up with some Kvaik Voss yeast. This is actually my favorite yeast. It has a bit of like a citrus profile, but I like it. And it's so versatile, you can ferment this stuff at like crazy high temperatures and the higher the temp, the faster it ferments. This, this stuff is like a super yeast. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and call this done. And again, I'm just gonna reiterate, you know, my inclination is actually just to sprinkle some of this directly into the keg and leave it sit and do its thing. But I've read multiple sources that say when you're trying to clean up a flavor, an off flavor such as acid aldehyde, you wanna make a yeast starter and you want to pitch actively fermenting wort at high Krausen into this. And then I'm gonna put it on the stir plate. Apologies for like bringing in just a random person here at the very end, because we had me and Ross, now you. First question is, does it smell like apples? Not to me. Not to me either. No, no apple smell at all. It doesn't smell <laughs> hoppy. It's, it's not, not at its peak It's anymore. not bright. It's not hoppy. Means, no. And, that, and which is a problem because this is a West Coast IPA. We should at least be getting some hops. Does it taste like apples? No. No. It's gone. I think we can safely say that I definitely rushed that last beer. Mm -hmm. I didn't give the yeast enough time to do their thing. And... That's what happened. I'm actually really happy with this. I kind of like it. Yeah. I mean, it's also nine in the morning and, you know, any beer. It pairs well with and, coffee. Yeah, it pairs well with mornings. That's it. Thanks for watching.